Reduce fractions. Okay, we're going to reduce fractions of GCF. Now, first of all, let's see if we can reduce this. Reduce this sucker. There's not a wrong way to do that. Well, there's probably plenty of wrong ways, but there's multiple right ways to do this. Who's got it? Hunter, what do you got? Two over three. Two over three. Anyone got anything else? Checking. Were you getting there eventually? Okay, how did you get two over three? What'd you do? I saw both of them had the greatest common denominator, 12. Greatest common factor, yes, 12. So if you divide them both by 12, you get two and you get three, right? Um, did anyone do it in a different way? Yeah, Kiara? So I, I just saw how many times this 24 going to uh, conserve the structure. Yeah, so it's going to yeah, but it doesn't go in there. What? So what'd you do, Grace? I just kept splitting the two numbers yeah, in half. Yeah, just keep cutting in half. You get 12 uh, eighteenths, right? And then what? Keep going in half? Nine, six. Six ninths. And you can't do that in half, but what goes into both of those? Uh, three. 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 So that goes in two and three times. You, you got there. But the, treat, the trick is, if you can find the biggest number that goes into both, then that's only one step and you're done. It's harder to find that bigger number sometimes, but it's only one step. Sometimes it's easier just to keep chipping away at it. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? But it does help to know the greatest common factor of two numbers because you can just divide them by that and you're done, okay? So let's see if you can do this. Now, th here's another way you could do this. Um, you could list out the prime factors. Do you know what the prime factors are of 24? Can you do that in your head? Um, Can you do it in your head, Hunter? What's a prime factor? Yeah, I guess there. not. So have, you, have we done factor trees yet? Yes. Yeah. We literally went over them on like Thursday. Yeah, so how do you, what are the prime factors of 24? How do you do this? How do you start it? Start with 24 at the top. Okay, got it. <laughs> and then you split it into yeah. two numbers multiplied by each other. Yeah, what two numbers multiply to get 24? Six times four. Six times four, and then you can keep taking those apart, right? Mm -hmm. Two so, times three, and those are done, because those are prime. And then two times two. Two times two. So basically, here's the prime factors of 24. Two times two times two times three, right? So these are all the little engine parts that will not be, you can't take apart those anymore. What about 36? What's 36 look like? Um, six times six. Okay. And then 12 times three. Two times two times six. So this is two times two times three times three. So far so good? All right, watch this. This is cool. This is a long way to do it, but it's a cool way to do it. 24, 36 is just, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 over 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Any argument there? Right? That's what 24 equals. That's what 36 equals. Mm -hmm. now I'm going to take my red pen of death and I'm going to destroy. <laughs> what are you left with? <laughs> that sounds like a balloon. <laughs> Okay, I sound like a balloon. Awesome. All right, so far, does that make sense? Now, would that have taken less time to do it this way? Not necessarily. Sometimes it does. Sometimes this is the better way to reduce fractions, but most of the time, um, stick with what you know, okay? But that is an option. So let's see if we can do this with another one. Let's reduce this fraction. The factor tree 
Yeah. Or you could just reduce it your own way, but um, you could do the factor. Yeah. What do you cancel out the zeros. Okay. You can divide them both by 10 right away and get rid of those zeros. So 42 over 105. And then. What? And then four, you got 42 over 105. And then what goes into both 42 and 105? Two. Two doesn't. Numbers. A number. If there's one number I can think of that goes into yeah, both. There's one. There's actually a couple different numbers, but mm, yeah. Three. There's three. Yeah, three. Uh, three goes into forty-two because it goes into six, right? And three goes into hundred five because it goes into six, right? Can you add the digits. Mm -hmm. What else goes into that? And then you end up if you divide them both by three, you get a smaller number. But then you can reduce that more. Okay, or we could do prime factorization. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that, okay? So if I multiplied by two, it'd be two times two, 10, right? Right, two times two, 10? So you got two times two, 10. Well, two, 10 is two times 105. Well, 105 is three times 35, well 35 is five times seven. So I just did that in my head because I'm wicked smart, but you could just factor tree that out. So 420, so you like 10 times 42, that's two times five and you're done. This is six times seven, six is two times three. So eventually you get two times two times three times five times seven. Yes. So, couldn't you split 420 into 210? What? Can you what? What? Because uh, I thought that factor tree, like, you take the number off the top and you split it into two. Yep, that's what we did there. Yeah, yeah you so could I do. It could, could be 200. Two times 210, yeah, and you can split. Eventually, you'll end up with the same numbers. Two times two times three. There's no other, pro there's no other way to end up any other way. Okay, but you can, like 10 times 42 or two times 210, you'll still get the same final prime numbers when you take it all apart, okay? Um, 1050, what goes into 1050? 10. 10 times 105, right? Okay, 10 is two times five, those are done. What goes into 105? Five goes in. 21 times, right? Yeah. Five's prime. What goes into 21? Seven and three. Three times seven, and those are both prime. So this is uh, two times three times five times five times seven. Take out my RPD. So what am I left with? Two fifths. That's it. That was kind of satisfying. All that stuff canceled. It's really satisfying. Did you do that noise for us again? I didn't make a noise. That was actually the numbers. <laughs> That's not it. That's not right. Um, so that's another way to do it. But if I were to reduce this fraction, I would say, okay, let's start here. Boom. Because if you divide them both by 10, you just take away zeros. You forgot to use the red pen. And they didn't scream. Well, these aren't, that's not the red pen, so they, they don't die. They're just seriously maimed. Okay, so then you can go there. I think seven goes, yeah, seven goes in six times and 15 times. Six and 15 both have three in it. So you can take out a three out of um, six times, you get two. Take a three out of 15, you get five. So two fifths, boom, I'm done. Okay, so there's multiple ways you can reduce this fraction. Uh, there's no, out of those three or four ways that we just went over, that's, none of them is wrong. None of them are wrong, but you just need to decide which one works for you, okay? Now, here's a cool thing. Um, you could use this when you're multiplying fractions. Look at this. Let's multiply this fract these fractions together. 27 30 seconds times 20 
60 thirds. Okay, well, I could write these as prime factors. What are the prime factors of 27? What times what equals 27? Um, three times nine, but nine is three times three, right? Yeah. So this is just three times three times three. Do you see why that's 27? Yeah. You could do a factor tree. And then 32, what's 32? Let's see, two times 16. Um, 16 is two times two times two times two. So this is just two times two times two times two times two. Now, trust me, you could do the factor tree for 32 and you'd still get two times two times two times two times two. All right, and then we're gonna do 20 times, what's 20? That's two times 10, which is two times five. So 20 is two times two times five. Um, I know that you don't, you don't have to do that in your head, but do you see what, how I'm doing it in my head? Yeah. Because that's two times 10, but 10 can be breaking that, broken down into two times five. Okay, 63, you can do that in your head. What's 63? Um, 63. What times what equals 63? Seven. Seven times nine, nine can be break it, broken down to what? So what's my final factorization, guys? Three times three times seven. Good. Now I take out my RPD. Yes. No. Yeah, 21 times three works too, and then 21 is three times seven. So either way, you'll get the same thing. Three times three times seven. Okay, let's kill the. Let's kill some stuff. Threes. Oh, 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 why? Don't stop. I have a family. Oh. <laughs> Okay, and then anything cross cancel or vertically cancel, it doesn't look like it. So we're left with three times five is 15. Two times two times two, that's eight times seven is 56. So there's your final answer to that. So see how you could do that with cross canceling as well. You don't have to. You can cross cancel the way you normally do, or you can just multiply these crazy numbers, 540 over some other big number and then try to reduce that but it's a lot easier to reduce before you multiply okay doable these are just other suggestions these this lesson was just more of a well you could also do what you've been doing this way but if you're doing what you're doing and you're successful at it then stick with what's good this is just another suggestion you don't have to apply it okay Questions? Comments? Why is it so cold? Is it cold? It's not cold. It's definitely not because I'm always cold. And those two are my witnesses. I'm not cold right now. Okay. It's a miracle. Stay warm. Exactly. Black man! Give me some math and I'll give you some.